Good morning. We're glad you're here with us to worship this morning. Let's stand as we worship. see you all. If you're joining us online, we want to welcome you as well. Uh, my name is Justin Brody. I'm the youth pastor here. And you might have noticed when you walked in today, there's all these balloons and stuff set up and these numbers, 2021. And what does that have to do with the service today? Well, today is our graduation Sunday. It's where we get to take a moment during our service to recognize uh, the class of 2021. And we have quite a few uh, graduates to recognize here 
today, and we want to start our service off by uh, doing that. We have a special gift for each one of them. Uh, this year, we've got cu custom fleece uh, blankets. They're super warm, super soft, and you know, a lot of them, a lot of us, when we were born, we started out having kind of a favorite blankie or kind of blanket, right? And as we grew up, we kind of took that blanket everywhere we went, and some of you still have them. I, I know uh, over the years, I've gone to graduation uh, receptions and parties, sometimes parents will even put the blankie out, kind of as like, a, you know, with the pictures and stuff, kind of as a, a reminder or whatever. Uh, so, uh, but these blankets are really awesome. Uh, it reminds us of a couple things. First of all, blankets give us uh, warmth, you know, and uh, these blankets will be nice. So when they go off to college or wherever they go, they can take them to to, to sporting events, or when they get cold, they can wrap themselves up in it. Uh, blankets provide comfort, you know, when we're, uh, maybe when we are fearful or we're scared or uh, in moments of grieving, uh, sometimes just wrapping up in a blanket can f feel that comfort and security. Um, and uh, I want them to remember that the church here, Oakwood Christian Church, is their home, and it's a place that they can always come back to where they can feel that comfort and that love and that security every time they come back and visit, no matter where they're going. So uh, what we're going to do this morning is I'm just going to call your name. If you're here this morning, uh, if you will come up here to my right, your left, and uh, um, uh, my wife, Amanda, will give you your blanket. And then if you'll come across the stage, down the steps, and just line up right up here on the, down on the, the front, in front of the stage, when everybody's through, we'll pray over all of you, and then you can go... Um, uh, back to your seats after we're done praying. Some of our graduates were already here at the early service. Some of our OBA students, they're on their way to Colorado for their senior trip. And uh, so they're, they were here this morning, but I will read their name. So and if I call your name and you're here, please come on up and we'll go through our list. There's a lot of you. Luke Balenti, come on up here, Luke. Amira Barber. Brianna Bolenball. Ethan Bricks. Allison Carr. Carissa Carr, Cade Goki, Angel Hardman, Nick Hawk, Willie Johnson, Alex Kapke, Emmy Lichty, Grace Lohman, Kaylee Lusky, Carrie Ann Manley, Maddox Mayberry, Ethan Morris, Kaylee Murray, Nai Ramirez, Sydney Rogers, Anna Tatro, Matoka Tennyson, and Sage Whittington. I told you there was a lot of them, so as they come on up here, if you guys will make their way uh, down front, we're so uh, excited for them, we're so proud of them and all of their accomplishments. And we want to just pray over them as we uh, continue in our service today and, and our time of worship. Um, so we will, uh, will you join me for uh, prayer as we pray over this class of 2021. Let's pray. Father, I'm just so thankful for each and every one of these students that are standing before us. And it's a privilege and honor to be uh, able to walk alongside of them in their journey. Whether they have been born and raised in this church, whether they've been attending for a little while, uh, no matter what involvement they have here at Oakwood, uh, we are their church home, our church family, and we are so proud of them. We want them to know that wherever they go in their next step of their journeys, that we are going to be a church that continues to pray for them and support them and provide any way that we can for them and encourage them along the way. Thank you for each and every one of them, their families, in this name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. So, all right, guys, thank you. You guys can go back to your seats. Stand as we continue to worship this morning.
the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the lion and the lamb. Every
struck wonder at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power. to receive, you know, if, if it's hands out, um, whatever that looks like today. If you've got a graduate today, grad, gather around them, lay a hand on them, but the Lord wants to send you off with a blessing, especially to the graduates as you step into this next chapter. So, so just receive from the Lord as we sing this next song.
and not against us, Lord. Lord, even when we're in a bad place, you're still for us, Lord. You were faithful to us before we were faithful to you, Lord. And we can rest on that and rest in you, Lord. Lord, we pray over these graduates, Lord, as they get ready to head out in life, Lord, that your blessing be on them, Father God. And Lord, we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Please be seated.
Wow. Amen. Uh, I've already noticed there's not a lot of, there's some, already some non-dry eyes in the audience after that amazing worship. And then watching that, I mean, uh, that group gets any bigger, uh, it's going to be harder to find songs to play through an entire message. So, uh, so good to be here again with you guys this morning. And I got a question. How many of you guys like to watch the Olympics? And you know, last year I was kind of looking forward to the Olympics and then COVID, you know, happened. So the Olympics got pushed back to, to I think this summer, I think is, so it's the 2020 Olympics in 2021 or something like that. But here's why I like to watch the Olympics. It's just something about the pageantry of the Olympics. The, somehow I feel like when I'm watching a sport, even though I don't understand any of the rules, like fencing, I don't know how you even score a point in fencing, except for when I'm watching it, I'm just like, I feel patriotic, like, go USA. And like every morning I find myself checking the ESPN app, you know, looking for the medal counts and seeing where USA is at and that. I don't know if that's you or not. Some people like the Olympics when it comes around every four years, the Summer Olympics, they are glued to their TV sets. Maybe it's a particular sport that you uh, participated in when you were younger that you like to watch those athletes. But the other thing that draws me in about the Olympics is the storylines. Some of the, the headlines going into the games, you read about certain stories of athletes overcoming different obstacles and adversity, and also some of the expectations that they have. Now, particularly if you go back a few years with me to the 2008 uh, Summer Games, the Beijing Games, the Summer Olympics in Beijing, there were a few highlights uh, uh, anticipation, some storylines that were running through, and you may remember them as we, uh, as I recall them. One of them was a young guy, a swimmer by the name of Michael Phelps. You guys remember this guy, Michael Phelps? And so uh, the, the, the dream for him was he had a chance to win, and he did eight gold medals in one Olympic Games. Never been done before, has never been repeated since. And so it was just history, watching him, you know, some of the, the, the swimming strokes that they do. I couldn't even name them all. Like, I don't even know. Like, when I jump in a pool, my job is to not drown, okay? I, so, but I enjoyed watching him swim, and even some of his races were like a tenth of a second between, you know, a gold medal and a silver medal. So it's just that pageantry, the storyline. Maybe you remember the storyline in the 2008 games about a, a runner by the name of Usain Bolt. I mean, what kind of name, right? Usain Bolt, who set the a world record in the 100 and 200 meter dash. I mean, look at the photograph. He makes these other runners who are all Olympic athletes look like they're standing still. That's how fast Usain Bolt was. And I just remember watching that and going, wow, that's something that I'll never forget. That, that That's a story that I got to see. I got to see that history um, take place. But there's another story from the 2008 Beijing Games, and it's a story that sometimes we don't necessarily think about or we don't want to remember. And that was this, the United States men and women's track and field team had dominated the four by 100 team relays over the, the last you know, decades and decades of, of, of Olympic Games. And going into those Beijing Games in 2008, they were poised to win gold. It was pretty much a done deal. It was just now was who was going to get silver and who was going to get bronze. But something happened that had never been ha happened before to the men's and women's teams. Both teams failed to qualify for the medal round, for the final round. Does anyone know why? Because in the preliminaries on the men and women's side, both fumbled the exchange of the baton in their preliminary races. There's a picture of that. And no one likes to talk about that. 
And so this morning, I do want to talk about the exchange of the baton. Because I think that it's a crucial transition when you're passing that baton from one person to another. And when we talk about the Bible, uh, the Bible has a lot of race uh, words, a lot of, um, talks a lot about the Christian life being a race and transitions. And when I think of transitions and I think of the Christian life, I think of high school graduation. What a, what a, what bigger transition in a young person's life is there than graduating high school and moving on into the next phase of their, of their race? And from the slideshow you saw, we have students that are going into school, going into Votech, military, the workforce. We have them going all over the place and all over the world, literally. And I want to draw your attention to a scripture that we're going to look at today in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2 of the New Living Translation. It'll be up on the screen for you there. Timothy, my dear son, this is Paul writing to Timothy, be strong through the grace that God gives you in Christ Jesus. You have heard me teach these things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Now, teach these truths to other trustworthy people who will be able to pass them on to others. So I hope through that scripture that you can see a little bit of this uh, baton passing, the language that is in there. You have Paul talking to Timothy about his teaching, that he's been teaching and passing the baton on to Timothy. And Timothy is now running with the baton, looking to pass it on to other trustworthy people who will then pass it on to other people. That's a great picture in scripture again does a great job talking about the Christian life as a race. And particularly when it comes to graduation Sunday and youth ministry and what we do with our young people, it's a great picture. Because one of the ultimate goals of our youth ministry is to come alongside parents and to encourage them and help them as their students grow from babies into children into young adolescents into adulthood. And the different stages of life were there so that students can move past not just a religious experience, but into a relationship with Jesus Christ so that they can become disciples who make disciples. Now, this goes beyond just the parent's responsibility of whose job it is to pass that baton. If you're a believer, if you're a Christian, if you're in this room and you believe in Jesus Christ, you have a responsibility as well to be one of these passers of the baton. Perhaps you are not just a parent, maybe you're a grandparent of one of our graduates here this morning. Maybe you're a close family friend. Maybe you've been a small group leader in the youth group. You've been a children's volunteer in the children's ministry. You've changed diapers in the nursery. You employ as a boss some of these students in your places of business. Maybe you are a teacher in the school system, a coach, You see, when you gave your life to Jesus Christ and God put the call on your life, you you got into the race and you now have a responsibility to pass that on to other people. That's what disciples do. Disciples make disciples. So I thought, what can we really learn from the passing of a baton? What are some thoughts, some rules for life? So we went to the rule book of the United States Track and Field rule book. And there's three thoughts this morning that I want to share with you quickly that I think we can gain from this spiritual transition of passing the baton talk. And here's the first rule. It's rule 25. And this is what it says. The baton shall be a smooth, hollow, circular tube made of wood, metal, or other rigid material in one piece. Its length shall be between 28 and 30 centimeters. Its circumference shall be 12 to 13 centimeters, and it shall not weigh less than 50 grams. No material or substance may be applied to the baton. Here's our first thought. It has to be the right baton. Our baton that we're talking about is the gospel. The good news of Jesus Christ. And here's why that's important. Because over the years as I've worked with students and youth ministry and family ministry, culture attacks more and more, harder and harder. Each and every year, I'm surprised at what these students have to go through 
in comparison to what I went through as a teenager when I graduated high school, man, I had it easy. I didn't have to go through no year of pandemic. I, I, I didn't have to go through uh, increased anxiety and stress and suicidal thoughts and tendencies. You know, all of that stuff almost doubled over the last year among our young people through this pandemic. They have a lot going on. And here's what the baton has to be the right baton. And it's easy to get caught up when we're trying to raise our kids and encourage them. It's easy to get caught up in pursuing a lot of good things. A lot of great things even. We want our kids to be well behaved. Nobody wants their kid to be that kid that gets sent to the principal's office all the time. And so we start out with things like teaching our kids good manners and good behavior. We want to see our kids succeed in sports, so we often push them uh, to succeed athletically. We want them to get good grades. So academically, we're always pursuing them and, and encouraging them. We want them to get good scholarships, as many of our graduates have been recipients of many different types of scholarships to help them go to college or training to the next stage of their life. And even as they leave and go into adulthood, we still want to focus on those really good things and great things. We want them to be able to come, become financially independent. We want them to have a good job, to have a good reputation in their community. And the list could go on and on and on. But here's, here's the encouragement and the warning. Don't get so focused on the good things and the great things that we lose sight of the God things. Don't get so focused on pursuing the good things and the great things that we forget to pursue the God things. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the truth that we need to be focusing on, passing not just to this generation, but to the generations to become. Second rule, it's actually number two in the rule book. It says this, each takeover zone shall be 20 meters long, of which the scratch line is the center. The zone shall start and finish at the edges of the zone lines nearest to the start line in the running direction. Uh-huh. <laughs> I read that. I'm like, what? And basically what it's saying is this, is here's the thought. The thought is this. The space to pass the baton is limited. So take a look at the photograph, that, that takeover zone that they're talking about in track is a very, very narrow uh, zone where the runner with the baton has that much time to make the pass. So the window of opportunity to pass the baton is limited. Now, hear me out, church. I'm not saying that there's an expiration date on this window of opportunity, but what I'm saying is that when over 80% of students make a decision to accept Christ by the time they're 16, the window is very limited. And Paul says, make the most of every opportunity that you have. So as parents and grandparents and teachers and small group leaders and Sunday school teachers, coaches, whatever role that you have, recognize that window to make the most impact in someone's life is very, very limited. This is evident that we see every year around this time with the graduation ceremonies and at graduation parties. And you see uh, the moms particularly, you know, they'll be tearing up, you know, every time they see, you know, a picture of their son or daughter on the screen or they see a commercial of a puppy dog that needs adopted. I mean, it doesn't matter. Like the tears just start flowing. And you often hear them say, they grow up so fast. Time sure does go by fast, doesn't it? And I, and I would have to agree with that. As a parent myself of two uh, little girls, I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old, and now my five-year-old is officially going into first grade. So now she's in the number grades. She's past the letter grades, the pre-K and the K. Now she's in first grade. And I look at a man and I'm like, time just needs to slow down. It needs to slow down. The window of opportunity is very limited. So we have to make the most of the impact that we have with our students. The next rule. This one was a little bit tricky. Here's what it says, rule number 12. The baton shall be carried by hand throughout the race, and if dropped, it shall be recovered by the athlete who dropped it. He or she may leave the assigned lane to retrieve the baton, 
provided that no other runner is impeded, and provided that by doing so, the distance to be covered is not lessened. So the thought is this, a dropped baton is not the end of the race. This was a new one for me, because I thought that meant you dropped it, it was over. And probably I I thought that way because what happened to me when I was in fourth grade? So this past week, I saw a lot of elementary schools having their um, little Olympics or their track and field day. I guess schools call them different things now. But when I was in elementary school, we had those field days. And I remember as a fourth grader, I had signed up for two events that you could sign up for. I signed up for the kickball kick, kick the kickball, and the football toss, football toss. And right before the game started, and we had other elementary schools, you know, that were over to compete, you know, so we were representing Roosevelt Elementary School, so we did not want to get beat by, you know, Northwood or Edwards. We were determined that we were going to, you know, win our Olympics. Our PE teacher asked me if I would join one of the relay races because they were short a runner. I didn't know what what I was supposed to do. He just handed me one of these things. And said, you're going to run with it. And when you, get around to the, uh, when you get around and start to make the turn, your classmate's going to be there. And you just hand it off to them. And they'll take it and run with it. That's it. Simple enough. So I take off. I'm a short distance runner. I'm made for sprinting. <laughs> and I turn the corner and I get ready to hand off the baton. And sure enough, like a slow motion movie, I just... Uh, 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 and I just drop it. I drop it. All I, all I remember as a fourth grader is that my uh, classmates were yelling at me, calling me names. Even my PE coach was like, you had one job. All you had to do was pass the baton. It was that easy, and you dropped it. And for the, what felt like an eternity, they just we all kind of just huddled around, and we lost the race. And we just kind of like cast blame all over on me. And I thought the race was over. But now I look at this rule and realize it's not over if you drop the baton. Because the one who initially drops it can pick it back up. As long as you don't obstruct other runners and other lanes. And you don't try to cut the distance back. What does this have to do with spiritual transitions? Here's why. Here's why. As a youth pastor, I I listen to podcasts all the time. I'm constantly reading books, reading statistics that say this, that up to 60% or more of students that graduate high school walk away from their faith. They walk away from their faith. So of all those students that you just saw on that slideshow and celebrating and laughing and smiling and crying, statistics say 60% of them are going to walk away from their faith. And what that tells me is this, is either the students themselves are dropping the baton or there's a problem with the exchange. Now, we could go round and round and we could pass the blame on everyone and everything. We, we could play the blame game and sometimes the church is really good at doing that. Oh, it's the youth ministry's fault. I mean, just look at the state of youth ministry. All they do is drink Mountain Dew and eat pizza and play games, you know, they they don't really teach anything. You know, it's the youth ministry, it's their fault. And then others are in the camp to say, no, 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 it's the parents' fault. I mean, the Bible's clear that the parents are the spiritual leaders of the children. It's in the Bible. It's not my job to raise someone else's kids. And yet, then there's still another that are in the camp where they go, the church is just irrelevant. And we see it as a place full of a lot of hypocrites and not a place to belong. Do you want to know how you can disenfranchise and and, and disvalue a student the quickest way? You want to know? I'm going to tell you. Go up to a student and tell them this. You're the future of the church. Go up to a student and tell them you're the future of the church. And what you might have as good intentions, what they're going to hear is this. I don't matter. Right now, I don't matter. Now, I am so thankful And the reason that my wife and I and my family chose to lock arms and stack hands here at Oakwood is that the leadership here does not believe that. They believe that students are relevant today and now and that we encourage our students to be actively serving and participating in church, not just attending church. But when you tell a student that they're the future of the church, they find that there's no real value for them. 
And it often leads to them leaving and abandoning their faith. So what happens is we get into this blame game, right? Where you can just cast as much blame from one side to the other. And this is the picture that I get. I, I imagine a drop baton similar to back when I was in fourth grade. And we're all arguing around it, seeing who's at fault, who's dropped it, and why was it dropped, while the race continues and we continue to be lapped. And not only do we continue to be lapped, but we continue to be laughed at. Because we've forgotten to focus on the important things, the God things. According to the rules, the race isn't over when you drop the baton. So pick it up. Pick it up. You know, there's, there's a few categories that we probably all fall into as we get ready to, to uh, conclude this morning. And the first category is this. If you're here today, or you're watching online, and you have fumbled the baton... Perhaps it's been a time in your life where you just felt like you've neglected your responsibility as, as a Christian, as a disciple who should be making disciples. Perhaps there's been a moment in your life where you've struggled with your own faith. I don't know what it may be. I, I do know that over the years I've had dads in my office crying because they wish they had more time, that they'd spent more time with their kids doing the God things and not just the good things. And there's, there's this sense of regret and maybe a sense of neglect that they feel like they failed. And here's what I want to say is we've all failed at times. We've all dropped and fumbled the exchange. But the race isn't over. Pick it up. Keep running. Some of you in the room here this morning, you have received the baton, but you have dropped it. Maybe intentionally that you've dropped it. You've turned away from your faith. Maybe you've just become apathetic and question your faith, or doubt has crept into your mind about whether or not this gospel of Jesus Christ is real. Maybe you're caught in sin and you feel like you can't get out. There's no way out for you that you've disqualified yourself somehow because you have dropped the baton. Pick it up. The race is not over just because you drop a baton. And for those of you that are carrying the baton right now, and you're getting ready to enter that transition zone, that takeover zone, you're getting ready to pass that baton on to somebody. That's called discipleship. Who, who are you right now actively pursuing to share the gospel with that you can hand that over to them? You know, for you graduates in class of 2021, I got to tell you why this is important to me. Because I have two little girls, Hope and Brecklin. And not just the class of 2021 that you know, as you go on your next adventure, some of you are going to be those future teachers and Sunday school teachers and nurses and doctors and EMTs and lawyers. And... But just as an entire church, why does it matter to me? Because you guys are the ones that might put the baton in one of my girl's hands. There, there may be someone in this room that this summer at Vacation Bible School my daughter will hear about Jesus Christ through one of you because you chose to enter that takeover zone and hand it off to her. You know why? Because I drop the baton. As a husband, as a father, we've all messed up. But the race isn't over. Pick it up and keep running. And finally, I'll say to, to those of you here this morning, you've never even gotten into the race. You've been a spectator up until this point your entire life where you've been standing on the sideline and you've been watching everyone else's race. And here's what I want to say to you. Today is the day that you need to get in the race. You need to give your life to Jesus Christ. Put your trust in him because what he did on the cross for you is worth it. It's so worth it. When Paul writes to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4, he says to Timothy, 
I've fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith. It's so worth it to pick up that baton and keep running. Because someday, someday, when we all cross that finish line, it doesn't matter. Gold medals, silver medals, bronze medals don't matter. But what will matter is this. If Jesus himself will look at you and say, well done, good and faithful servant. And he won't put a medal around your neck. Instead, he'll place a crown of righteousness upon your head. If you won't give up, if you keep passing the baton, it's worth it. So worth it. And as a church, we're going to partake in communion here in just a moment. And let it serve as a reminder because the writer of Hebrews tells us to fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. It says, when you're running your race, run your race with perseverance. Throw off everything that, that entangles you and the sin that trips us up. And keep running that race with perseverance. Jesus himself, the one that invites us to this time of communion, said that if anyone would come after me, they must deny themselves and pick up their cross and come after me. Lots of race talk in the scripture. It's not so much when you trip up or where you're at in your journey, but will you finish that race? As we take communion this morning, and hopefully you got that as you walked in, and if you're watching online, you have got your preparations made. Focus on this morning that Jesus, what he did for you, and that he's given us opportunity to share that with others, who will share that with others, who will share that with others. Let's pray. Father God, we are so thankful. We don't deserve to be able to be here and to worship you, but with every fiber that we have in our beings, with thanksgiving in our hearts, we're so thankful that you loved us enough that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for us. Even in the times where we fail to pass the baton on or we've dropped it completely, you're there telling us to pick it up. Keep running. Keep running because you sent your son Jesus to run to the cross for us. As we take these emblems, help us to remember that. It's okay to focus on some good things and it's okay to focus on some great things. But we need to be running and pursuing those God things. We're so thankful that we take this meal every week as a reminder to not to give up, but to focus on Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. Amen.
Go ahead and stand with us as we sing.
I had first service, uh, be seated. I'm going to make you all stand through the announcements. I'll make it quick. Ha, got every one of you. Hi, I'm Heath Kinnaman. I'm the sports outreach minister here at Oakwood Christian Church, and what a great day to be able to worship in the house of the Lord. Uh, that's right, we've got some people excited. i uh, got a few announcements. Uh, right after this service, we have Discover Oakwood. If you want a quick overview of what Oakwood is, what they stand for, and a great meal, uh, we will be over at the dining room. Uh, so if you want to go that direction after this, you are more than welcome if you're new. Uh, Grace in Motion, we are selling tickets out in the uh, Gap area. That's our east lobby. Uh, Lori Giesling will be out there selling tickets. Uh, if you want to support our girls who have put nine months of hard work into uh, uh, honing their gift that God has given them, we would love for you guys to uh, join us on Saturday at 7 o'clock. Uh, we have a cookout this Wednesday uh, 5.30 for our night of worship, and at 6.30 we have our night of worship service. Uh, we'd love for everyone to be here and to lift our voices in unison and just praise God. Uh, summer activities at the Oak, we have the Pinewood Derby, that is June 12th. We've also, through the summer, we've got family game nights. If you enjoy playing guard games, board games, whatever it might be, bring your favorite family finger foods and games, and we'll just uh, hang out and have fun. That takes us right into offering. For us to be able to do what we do, to have different ministries, different activities, it takes you guys' obedience. And we thank you guys for being obedient to what God has given you and being able to invest that back in the church, that we can use it for outreach, for uh, just activities to be able to serve you guys. We've made it as easy as, you, as we can for you guys. Uh, boxes in the back, you can text it in. You can use our app. You can come up here. You can mail it however you want. Uh, we try to streamline that for you guys. If you've made a decision, um, we will have elders, ministers up here to pray with you today. And, and guys, it, there's nothing better than to make that decision with God. And if someone has passed that baton to you, we would love to pray with you and help you walk through that. So as we pray for our offering, and if you've made a decision, I'm going to have you guys stand up and we'll get you guys prayed over and dismissed. Father God, we just thank you that we can come and worship together, and we thank you that you are an awesome God who pr uh, just pours mercy and grace out over each and every one of us. Father, we pray a blessing over the seniors as they close the chapter of being a young adult of moving into adulthood. Hood. Father, we pray that they continually stay focused. Father, we thank you for the provisions that you have given us, and we pray that you uh, just make those uh, provisions blossom, that we can use them to honor you, to help our community, to be in the lives of many people. We pray this in your son's mighty name. Amen. Go and be a blessing. <laughs>